Oh, you don't like this? You don't like how it's stretched out like this? Nuts. We can fix that. Hang on. There we go. That's that's way better. Here we go. Oh my god, Danny, you are... Mm. Live from Austin, Texas, where we've traveled through a 99-floor dungeon to deliver you a DMC a takedown request. God, no! It's Retro Pals with Danny and Alex. Hello, Alex. He you'll, hello, Danny. You will never get me alive, Bezos. I, you said I could use Chill Hop. You officially said so. It's in your email. Well, you took Fuck it off. back. Everyone watching this right now, please enjoy your free complimentary DMCA takedown request. Uh, make sure do not copy the music heard during tonight's stream to your talk boy to your cassette recorder don't do that companies no. hate that they absolutely hate being able to listen to the bomberman act zero soundtrack anytime you want so if you do that it'll really cheese them off make sure you don't don't do that <laughs> it's gonna be really funny when 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 we get the dmca takedown for bomberman yeah uh. <laughs> it'll be like for a grunt owned by tommy tallarico or something <laughs> God damn it, Tommy, please. Uh, big things happening in the world of Twitch. We're pushing it all into the background just so we can enjoy one godforsaken stream. For God's sake. Damn it. I don't know what kind of mood I'm in today. I'm in a weird mood. And it's appropriate because we're playing some weird games. We're going to cover an era of gaming we don't often document here on this stream. The Xbox 360. Ooh. That era, starting in 2006. As of yesterday... It's now retro, officially. <laughs> the new Xbox, the PlayStation 5, they're both out. A new generation of gaming can begin, and I want no part of it. I'm going to return back to the Xbox 360, the PS3, because that's good enough for me. And it's good enough for you, too, damn it. Danny's regressing. All mm -hmm. right, real quick, thank you so much to JP Ronnie for the holy shit 41 month resub. JP Ronnie says, can't wait for the best of the best games this week. Nothing Bye. but the best. Thank oh, you. boy. Oh, no, bad. All good, right. good stuff. So we took it to our patrons. We asked them, hey, which of these do you want to see? Some various uh, remakes of different calibers. Actually, they're all pretty crappy, it turns out. <laughs> but overwhelmingly, people wanted to see Bomberman Act Zero for whatever reason. Nothing else even stood a chance. I like to make these polls so that they're close, so that there's some competition, but this one, this is a this is a thing everybody wants to see, apparently. Everyone wants to suffer through Bomberman Act Zero, and hell, it's the start of a new generation, so let's return to the beginning of two generations ago and play some janky-ass Konami reboots and remakes, because, boy, there were a few companies out there trying to remake their franchises, and Konami went in pretty hard. They, uh, they tried pretty much everything for every franchise. Did any of it work? I guess we'll find out. I'm hype. Real quick, thank you to Reverend Crush for the three-month reason. Do appreciate that. Nice, thank you. Oh, boy. So, what's on the docket first, Danny? Well, we gotta start out with the game everybody voted to see. This is the one. This is it. We're actually gonna do this. I'm no, we're not. I'm trying my best to delay the inevitable. Maybe like a meteor will fall on this house. Right, God? Any second now. Maybe the fridge will catch on fire. Oh, God. I think I actually have to do this. Folks, this is Bomberman Act Zero. We just take this moment to remind you that this really did happen. This is not a homebrew. This is not a canceled release. This is a thing that actually hit store shelves in 2006 worldwide. Multiple people asking you to once you see this bad boy. Danny. Okay, yeah, no problem. No, 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 Danny. Don't listen to these beasts. Sorry. A joint production between Konami and Hudson shortly before Konami devoured Hudson. This was a, a harbinger of things to come, I guess. It's got Dolby. It's got thunderclouds. See hey, that? That's me. No, that's not. Who the hell is that? That's like an expanding brain meme guy. Strange bondage man buried deep underground where nobody could find him. We're going to dig him up. And take hey. him on an adventure. 
See that? That's Bomberman. You know Bomberman. It's a tool video, thank you. <laughs> yeah, um... Yeah, yeah, yeah! Load Runner turns into Bomberman, so I have a thousand different questions. Woke up in a cold, dark basement. Could this be a dream, or is this reality? Now, y'all know Bomberman. We've enjoyed him through the various eras. 8-bit, 16-bit, 32-bit, 64-bit, 128-bit. Were there any 128-bit systems? Yeah, uh, the GameCube and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We all know him, and we know what he looks like. He looks like this. Oh, yeah, let's put this bad boy on. There yeah, he just, is. Just to refresh your memory. This there is a Bomberman! That happy little guy. Oh, he's so pleasant! But... Seeing as how his origin came on 8-bit systems, there was only so much of the story they could deliver. Uh, I think his first game was like 40 kilobytes. <laughs> in that, they could only like pack in a few graphics, maybe some code, and that's it. I don't think the game cartridge had any story. You'd have to look into the manual to figure out that, oh, actually Bomberman is trying to fight his way out from an infinite dungeon full of deadly creatures. But when you see the game, it's all cutesy. And that eventually uh, stuck. He met a lot of cute friends. He started riding around on colorful kangaroos, and then as of 2006, that all stopped. And what I'm doing right now is I'm waiting for the prologue, because there is a prologue. There is? Yes. Is it dark? Oh, you better believe it. I just... That dark backstory you made up for NES Bomberman, it's real now. Woke up in a cold, dark basement. Could this be a dream, or is it reality? In a blurry haze. All I am aware of is my own existence. My body feels heavy, rigid, and cold. What am I doing in this place? The World War was seemingly <laughs> endless. Each nation came to possess lethal weapons of massacre, but to fall behind would mean one's own destruction, so needless battles ensued and the world was ravaged. Far to the east, a giant underground facility was built, a plan to develop the ultimate human weapon. In order to overcome the ever-worsening horrors of war, this highly classified plan was hatched deep underground. Scientists involved opted to utilize human faculties, physical, intellectual, and yeah, that kind of stuff. Each subject breathes its, breathes its first breath of life underground. They know nothing of why they're here, why they were born, but the program gives them one order. Fight. <laughs> I mean, fight. That's better. So yeah, uh, this is essentially a centuries-long program that... <laughs> Program. That uh, formed cyborgs from the ground up, put them in prison, and made them fight to the death. In the end, uh, supposedly, there would be like one cyborg who proved to be the best of them all. But I guess over the course of 300 <laughs> years, they all just kind of killed each other. It seems kind of wasteful. I just, I have, yeah, go, prison? Uh-huh. So, pardon me, so he's literally on a prison planet. Oh yeah. He's a... He's we are buried deep underground, we have to fight up through 99 levels to escape and fulfill our destiny. So he's a human... A human weapon of mass destruction. Uh-huh. Who is stuck on a prison program, and... We're going to the cage where okay. we're born. Do we want a male bomber or a female bomber? <laughs> he shows he's he's so big and she's so much smaller. I'll give her the advantage in battle. She's more agile. Is she? Uh-huh. Yeah, I don't know what's up with the sockets on her chest. Please, please be normal. No, chest not being normal about what it. What color should we give her? A nice green, maybe? Nice blue. What is with her bikini armor? Yellow, maybe? Ah, uh, we're gonna go with purple. With her bikini armor! Perfect. I just want to mention, I've never seen this game being played, so... Wow, you're in for a treat. Oh. Let's, uh, yeah, this looks good to me. Put her in the mold. Yep, grab her with the, the crane. Here we go. Oh, there she goes. <laughs> It's a well-oiled machine that's been operating for 300 years. I feel like I need to reiterate every five minutes or so that this is a real thing. This isn't just something I made up as a joke. This really actually happened. It's released at full price in 2006. You could pay 50 or 60 dollars 
for Bomberman Act Zero. Let's get into the game. All right, let's do it. I. I don't know about this. Well, Hudson was pretty sure. They told their producers the plan was set. All their best and brightest minds delivered the next generation Bomberman. All right, let's see. Opponent says, former staff of Hudson Soft publicly disowned this game and used profanity to describe it after its release. I don't know why they felt the need to <laughs> to do that, but yeah, that's Gosh. what happened. Oh, where am I? Wait, what? This there is we go. just ugly Bomberman. Uh, glorious HD. You can see all the screen at once. I'm up there in the upper left. Now, just like classic Bomberman, each level has a hidden set of requirements that unlock hidden panels that give you bonus points. I want to try and get at least one during our session here. Uh, for level one, the hidden requirement is bomb all the soft blocks. That being the, uh, the bombable blocks. Okay. So, why not? Let's try and do that. Okay. Let's see. Uh, we've got, uh, Uzi with one I of I died. The Uh, Rip Danny. You are dead! You are dead. Goodbye, Bomber Woman. That's it. Game over. Alright! Back to the title screen. <laughs> okay, so here's a 2007 Amazon review of this game, courtesy of Uzi. It's just a game to have fun with to pass the time. Not an actual full-time gamer game. Four stars. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be a full-time gamer playing this. So, some people... Not going to name names, but some people just may not be up to the challenge of this game. Uh, you'll notice that was a one-hit kill. I had one life, and there's no continues. Want to guess how many levels there are? Um, twenty. Ninety-nine. Nope. Ninety-nine levels. You got to clear in one shot. No saves. No continues. No extra lives even. Uh, at some point, you can pick up. I think an icon that protects you from one bomb blast, but that's it. I love that butt shot right at the beginning. Very classy. Very classy. Sorry, I meant to say assy. Danny! Get that guy. Get him. Yeah, I'm gonna blow up this guy. I wanted to get the hidden panel, but whatever. Survival is what's most important. I'm curious if anyone else has actually played this. What are your experiences? Because... Obviously, I tracked this down as soon as possible because I'm a freak and a mutant. Alex is furiously texting Bomberman right now. You know, like, Sorry. come on, join us on stream. Sorry, I had to take care of a, a minor emergency, but it looks like that fire is put out. Okay. Unlike the fires you're setting. It's not a literal fire, is it? No, no, no. Our fridge is not on fire. I was Thank just God. joking about that. No. Although, you know what? Fuck it. You want to go get on fire? Yeah, why not? Okay, uh, you're being reminded that Konami does have an arcade game that is Horny Bomberman Girl. That's right, that's pretty recent. Bomber Girl came out in Japanese arcades uh, within the last couple of years. Question. I think that did a lot better than this. Don't quote me on that, though. Again, question. Yeah. Um, I hate to ask, but is it horny, or is it just like... I think it's a little bit, a little bit horny. Might be for horn dogs. Yeah, I thought this game was a first-person shooter. I did not know it was just really ugly Bomberman. Excuse you. Sorry. That's an opinion. We only deal in facts here. It was pretty horny. Okay. That makes sense. That's something they would do. Noticing when you rub up against the walls, you just kind of go off in a direction. You, yeah. I, I'm sorry. I'm so quiet. I'm just the controls this are a little in. bit slippery, like even more so than you might expect. Oh boy. Okay. So after a couple minutes, you enter sudden death mode. I don't think we're gonna get that hidden panel, unfortunately. But hopefully, we can escape with our lives. And yeah, just because it's the first level, they don't take it easy on you. Whoa! I like the way the other character screams. I'm yeah. sorry. Alright. You were recommended to take the FPB route, which I don't know what that is, but... 
Hold on. You're alive. We'll see FPB for sure. Don't worry about it. Okay, okay. A lot more chains on this uh, bomber lady than I remember. <laughs> Last time I played this was on a CRT. <laughs> 50 bits from Kaibi Torari who says, You are alive! Get to the next stage. Okay. I'm alive. All right, round two. We're on our way to 99. Okay, uh, supposedly I... there is a speed run out there. This can be finished in like 40 minutes right. somehow. Yeah, yeah, I saw that listed. It's um... kind of incredible. I've seen, I, again, because I was busy doing some, I, I saw multiple people referencing, I'm sorry, it's Monday, it's Friday, it's, it's Wednesday, oh god, it's, the it's Monday, here. it's Friday, it's Wednesday. It's all days, it's all days for all people. Um, uh, they mentioned that this, that this lady has jiggle physics, please say that's false. Oh, yeah, it's totally true. If now, you look at the right moment, you get to see her uh, bomber boobs. Jiggle. No, I must have misspoken, I said please say this is false. Holy got shit. him. Murder. You gotta be ruthless to survive down here. And I got a heart icon, so I can actually take one point of damage. Oh my god, she does. There was jiggle, I noticed. That's incredible. And that was on the phys- it was- it, the physics are on the actual- the bikini itself, so it's like yeah. jiggly metal? <laughs> it's like jiggly- never- no, no. Oh, no, She's like, why I, do I have these? I'm a cyborg. Yeah! Yeah, everything else is hard body except for never mind. You know what? I don't <laughs> yeah, hard to, body is the word you want to use here. I don't need to I don't need to I don't need to talk about any of this. Nope. I don't even need to think. It's pure simplicity. You don't need to think at all. That's the that's the beauty of it. The beauty is firing up your Xbox, preparing yourself for an hour long marathon of ninety nine levels of Bomberman Act Zero, <laughs> and then dying at level sixty. Cursing and then starting over right away. Because you know it's a good game. Nice. Trapped him. Nice! Good Gotta job! Do what you can. Fortunately, that got rid of my heart, so I'm back to one hit kill status. Does this game have FMVs or anything? Because apparently the ISO is almost 8 gigs. Um, aside from the intro, that's that's pretty much it. I think the ending is just like a screen of text. <laughs> so, okay, so I guess all the gigs are for the, the, are to computate the jiggle physics. Yeah. Advanced computations. I had a heart, so I just went in. You... Advanced strats. I see, okay. There's okay, a... so for level four, the hidden panel involves standing still for one minute, so we're gonna try that. <laughs> Go on. Your life. Get to the next page. I... Please understand, I am... Still processing? I would say yes. it's hearkening back to a simple time, but... NES Bomberman, the original one, had lives. It had a password system, even. It had 50 levels, which at the time seemed like a little much, but... They actually went quicker than the levels in this game. That and there were actual enemies instead of just clones for you to fight. I said I'd stand still. Let's try and do that. Hope they don't find me. So at around 4.57 in that play timer in the lower right, we should see a hidden panel up here. Okay. And this, of all things, is something that's true to the original game. There's a whole bunch of secrets you could find that would give you a bunch of bonus points. If you did ridiculous things. Danny, this is making me so nervous. No, it's fine. No, no, they're gonna kick your ass. Danny, please live. I'm protected by at least a couple of blocks. I don't know how to tell you this, but these these bombermen are very well equipped to destroy those blocks. I don't think so. They wouldn't think to do that. Okay. I, I... About 20 more seconds to go. Oh my god, that one grabbed a heart icon. They could steal your heart icons. I didn't know that. <laughs> hey, Danny. I think they got your number. I don't think so. It's fine. You are dead. <laughs> Just the nonchalant way they say that. You are dead. You are dead. Well, they have been doing this for 300 years. Oh, big surprise, another dead cyborg. Better the way, start the machine again. The way that they kick you to the title screen is just so unfair. Yep, not even a continue screen, not even a rankings, stats to show you how you did. Let's play FPB mode. Do you know what FPB stands for? Um... 
fucking personal best. <laughs> it stands for first person bomber. Of course, I'm a fool. This is a mode that's exclusive to this game. It uses the power of the Xbox 360 to give you your own perspective. Okay, that's what all the bits are for. The gigs, I mean. Yeah. The bits, the gigs. The gigabits. There's a mode with camera control. Ah, she's beautiful. Rain. Start. Now, counterintuitively, uh, first person bomber man is not first person. It's just zoomed in! It's just, it's actually third person. <laughs> I, I did bad. I did bad. No, it makes sense. Look at that, you can move the camera, you can rotate. It's better because it gives you a limited view of the action. Earlier games, they had to show all the screen at once, because, you know, console limitations. But now, things are better. You can push select to show 1P over your head. I guess I prefer this mode because you actually do get a better view of the action. It's a little bit small in the other mode. Uh, not only that, you have a life bar. So you could theoretically absorb more than one bomb. Come here, you. Oh, I only have one bomb. I should be trying to power up. I just sorry that I'm so quiet. I am. Um... It's pretty fascinating this game. <laughs> the fact that it made it all the way through production and wasn't just some kind of fucked up prototype that they got rid of right away. Okay, left stick adjusts the camera, by the way. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, chat. We appreciate you. Okay, we got a couple of bombs now. We can probably corner this guy. Yeah, fuck this guy. He only has one. <laughs> the way you both raise your hand like, yeah! <laughs> Here comes the bomb! Okay, Joe Cool Maverick says uh, they, that, according to rumors, they were going to do an actual uh, first-person bomber mode, but it sucked so bad they decided to uh, just do this instead. They just kept the name. Yeah. Because it's catchy, I guess. Got him. Oh, that is kind of horrifying. Want to guess how many levels are in first-person bomber man mode? Oh, you know what? I'm going to go on a limb and say 99. Yep, you're right. Okay, hey! So a full 100% playthrough of this game involves 99 floors of the first mode, and then 99 floors of first-person bomber mode. Wait, 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 wait. So this is, like, entirely separate from the... Yes, it's it's counted as a unique mode with unique achievements and everything. Are any of the levels not in the square room? I'll get back to you on that. Okay. This is early Xbox 360. They couldn't just pull out all the stops, you know. It's 2006. The the height of graphics was Peter Jackson's King Kong, the official game of the movie. You remember that? Yes, I do. Oh. Fully bump mapped Jack Black face. Oh God, that was 2006, right? Because I remember that coming out, and I remember for some reason I remember that game being inescapable. Mm-hmm. It was for every system, but. It's also one of the first next-gen games, so a lot of people played it. Oh, we're not doing this for- we better not be doing this for a whole hour. No, yeah, no. I do have other games in mind, but okay. I wanted to show off the full splendor of Act Zero since people forgot. Or they never knew in the first place that this was a thing. I love having to rotate the scene so you can see more of the thing. Okay, that game was 2005, that makes sense, because that's when I was working at a GameStop, and... No, that was... No, no, I worked at GameStop the next year, and I saw that game in the youth section a lot. Mm -hmm. It was like every console! Was it on DS? It was that and the Golden Compass. Oh! How many used copies of Golden Compass did you see back then? I am... Oh, wow. I am seeing... I, I feel like I'm in the, the corridor at the end of uh, 2001, except it's like... Instead of beautiful flashing lights on the side, it's just copies of Golden Compass on <laughs> and King Kong. Ah, <laughs> oh, what a time! This was not multi-platform though. This is an Xbox 360 exclusive to this day, and unfortunately, it's not backward compatible. So you can't play it on the new Xbox. What? So why even buy one? 
because it catches on fire. Right. <laughs> it's an actual bomb from Bomberman. <laughs> that doesn't happen. It's just people blowing vape juice into it. Uh, really? note, note for the future, that's that's actually what happened. People are blowing vape smoke into it, and it uh, it acts like a fog machine when you do that. Oh, okay. I, I did not know that. I thought that the Xbox... Okay, never mind, never mind. Uh, Uzi says, my friend was a big King Kong fan, a movie fan, and bought what he thought was a box set, but it was only the production diaries from the making of, but not the movie itself. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> that sucks. All kinds of hazards to buying entertainment in the... Around 2006. Right, got that guy. Hey, that guy the Oh, okay. Only one guy, I guess, gets a screen. Mm-hmm. I'm going to play a little bit more of this and then explain some of the finer features of this game for the, the people who don't recognize its greatness. Philosines, we call them. That's... You love this game, right? Yes! Yes, I, I remember part of our prenup was that I, I must love Bomberman Act Zero. Uh-huh. You have to watch every second while I play it, even when the Lady Bomber turns around and shows everyone her butt. That happens at the end of every round. I don't hate that. It's weird, <laughs> but... It's another aspect of their personality that's not killing other cyborgs. They're real proud of their butts. Is this, is this just the Act Zero Bomberman, or is this all Bomberman? Um. It could be all Bomberman. Okay, I, I want to sure. believe it's all Bomberman who just absolutely love showing off their ass. Oh, I heard a scream that time. What yeah, I got one of them right off the bat. Okay, you ready for some shit? Check this out. See that? Uh-huh. That's how you win. Damn, nice. You're just setting off lines of bombs. Mm-hmm. Now you want to talk online? This game got online. Up to eight players can compete over the paid Xbox Live service. So if your account was all paid up for that month, you can enjoy all the Bomberman Act Zero you could possibly want. What if you didn't want to play Bomberman Act Zero? Or were there any other games on Xbox Live, or was this the only one compatible with the service? No, just this one. Damn, that's weird. I think there was, like, Uno. <laughs> oh, yeah! I remember that Uno! That was the one that, yeah, oh, Naughty Uno, yeah. Even more controversial than this game, somehow. <laughs> what I hear in my head every morning when I wake up. <laughs> You're alive. Get to the next stage. Get to the next breakfast. <laughs> you have a robot voice telling you what to do. Yes, all the time. And you may think there's very little variation. It seems kind of like a thin premise to stretch on for 99 levels with no breaks. Right. And to that, I say, uh, shut up. That's my rebuttal. 100 bits from Tank Catapult. Uh-huh. Tank Catapult says, I seed the boobs. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. We all did seed the boobs. <laughs> Maybe that was the appeal of this game, finally being able to make a bomber girl. Uh, yes, the Uno game did have jiggle physics, yeah. <laughs> all right. Depending on how you played it. All right, so I'm probably going to kill off my character here. Unfortunately... Alex said we don't have enough time to show off all 99 levels, so we should probably move on and do other things. But this is what a life bar gets you. You can actually stand in the flames for a good long while. Look at that, I took like three or four bombs there. So that's my expert uh. pro tip. If you want to survive in this game, get all the health power-ups and play in first-person Bomberman mode. So you played the single player mode. Alex is practically crying at this point. Sorry, sorry. And you're thinking, you know what? Maybe I just want to kick back with my buds with a cold one. Imagine we have a working fridge in this situation. Uh -huh, kick yeah. back with a cold one and enjoy some local couch multiplayer bomber man, just like the good old days. Mm -hmm. This game is all online. Nope. This Next option game. here, World Battle, it needs an Xbox Live Gold membership and no parental control. <laughs> Listen, you will hear Bomberman scream the absolute most horrid 1920s slurs at you. You may go through all these menus thinking, no, they couldn't have left that out. And no, that's by design. It is online only multiplayer for a Bomberman game. 
That was actually an issue with a lot of early Xbox 360 games. They were just thinking, oh, you got online play now. Why even bother playing with local humans? Meat sacks, as Microsoft called them. Uh, games like Dead or Alive Extreme 2, no local multiplayer. For a time, you just couldn't do it. Eventually they got the message and they were like, okay, we'll add in local multiplayer sometimes if we feel like it. I hated that era, by the way. As someone who does a lot of couch co-op with Danny, I despise. So you're thinking, all right, no multiplayer. The single player is long. Maybe there's some good uh, achievements to shoot for? Because achievement hunting was a thing after the yeah. 360 was out. A lot of people got all 1,000 achievement points on King Kong, the official game of the movie. Not mm -hmm. to mention that one Avatar game where you could get them all in like five seconds. Wait, wait, wait. Based on the movie Avatar? No, based on the, the cartoon series. Oh, damn. And there's some things here, like those secret panels I mentioned. It would give you uh, points for those. Look at that. I got that all the way back in 2009. Incredible. Oh, is it even... It doesn't even tell you what the damn achievements are. Damn you, Bomberman. Well, here's the thing. Almost all the achievements are tied to the online mode. Uh -huh. And they're all accumulation based, as in uh, they award you for blowing up players or blowing up those blocks, things like that. The thing is, these achievements, the block achievement for blowing up uh, the blow upables, it was like 10 million blocks. Someone did the math and figured out if you just played nothing but Bomberman Axe Zero and trying to get that achievement, it would take you several years <laughs> of uninterrupted playtime to get just one of these achievements. So that's cool. I don't remember how I got 100 battles. That's not a time of my life I want to remember or can remember, apparently. Uh, I... But what I'm trying to say here is, no matter what you're in for, achievements, single player, multiplayer, Bomberman Axe Zero has you covered. Definitely go buy it. It's a hidden gem. And now that I've said that, I'm just going to sit back and wait for the value to go up, up, up. We're gonna sell this baby for a cool $50. <laughs> and now that everyone is left, on to our next game. <laughs> you got it, you got your Barman X Zero. <laughs> that's about all I can get it from it. All That's about all the blood I can squeeze from that stone. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I'm usually piping in with my hilarious observations. Um, okay, so... Uh, Anton Aaron in chat has played this game for six years. You can apparently get a thousand bombs in one game. That's oh, are you, are you the world record holder? I hey. think I think you may have messaged me before the show. That's awesome, actually. Hey, yeah, yeah, they were giving me all hints earlier. Yeah, oh, thank that you, rules. thank you. Yeah, some people <laughs> got a lot. Of, they got a lot out of Bomberman Act Zero, so that just goes to show you. Every game has its gamer. I don't know what that means. <laughs> That's very inspirational, Danny. Thank, thank you. you. So, based on what people voted for this week, I decided that this week's theme should be weird remakes and reboots of Konami franchises for the Xbox 360. And there's one game I wanted to shoehorn into a stream for many, many years, but couldn't find the excuse. It would just be so random. I couldn't just put it in. It wouldn't fit any other theme. This is the only opportunity I possibly have to show off this game, and that's why right now we're going to play Beat and Groovy. No. But Alex, you love poppin' music. I... Oh god, no, no. Oh, Orange Wright is not happy about this. You don't say! <laughs> oh, we have some poppin' music fans, I ah, see. Ah, I see some poppin' stands. I well, hope you like if, this. Well, what if poppin' music was released in America? It would look like this. Just give me a second. Do I need to say anything? Do I even need to play this? So Konami, sensing the popularity of its Bimani series uh, <laughs> games, they decided, you know what, let's try and uh, let's try and bring those over to the American audience. Pop and Music had several sequels in arcades. Uh, six of them were released on PS1, and it continued on PS2 up until I think Pop and Music 14 was the last one released on PS2. And here in the Xbox Live Arcade era, they decided now was the time to release it to American audiences. So, important to note, this is not an art by an American. This is an art by a, uh... Rando. No! By... <laughs> oh, oh, I forget their name, but they, they are, they are not American. I like that it they says are, push... They are Japanese. I like how it says push start button and press start button. <laughs> wow. 
But yeah, the first thing you may notice is all the familiar characters you know and love from poppin' music, uh, Mimi, Yami, Sanai-chan, all those people, they have gone right in the dumpster, and they've been replaced with these much more appropriate, much more likable characters for this American edition. Let's play it. Alex acting like he doesn't want to relive this in any form. <laughs> So it gives you plenty of options to its credit. Let's go ahead and start the arcade mode. Oh. Well, it gives you three or five buttons. Uh, maybe we can fix that later on. But let's go ahead and start with uh, Jennifer. Look at the song list, and let's just go ahead and let's let's jump into a song. Alex's favorite, Missing Cat. They got Missing Cat in this. Yeah, of all songs, they with got these fucking. They got one of Alex's favorites. Oh my god. Just poppin' music with the world's worst character design. No offense to the artist, but that was, I guess that is pretty bad to say this is the world's worst character design. It's just, it's just like going from a filet mignon to Salisbury steak. But like, it's the dollar store Salisbury steak. <laughs> that dollar general steak. Yes. Oh, I love poppin' music. I don't think we've ever streamed it in any form, which is weird because... In our 20s, Alex and I spent a lot of time playing pop and music. Yes! We were submitting scores to the score site. It wasn't VJ Army, it was, um... Was it the Poppin' Navy or something? Yeah, it was Poppin' Navy! That's what it was. Oh, we got, we got so much excited stuff about pop, uh, being groovy, I missed this. Thank you so very much to Napjack27 for the subscription. Really do appreciate that. Enjoy, uh, well, this. Nice, thank you. Yeah, the pop coons don't disappear. I just, there's so much, yeah, shout out to all the, uh, all the, all the, all the Bimani stands in chat, because this is... We're in good company. We used to play a lot of pop and music back in the day, and nowadays the only chance we get to is at a local arcade called Arcade UFO. They have a lot of Bimani games. Uh, unfortunately, State of the World means we haven't been able to play that for many, many months. I'm dying, Danny. I'm dying, too. I haven't been able to play real pop and music for far too long. The pop coons are cute, I will say that. Yeah, they're nice and, and bouncy. I, I like that it's, uh, you know, poppin' music. I do have a couple questions when you're done. Yeah, we're almost done with this song. Cool. We actually have, we are very lucky. Like, Austin is starting to get arcades back again, after all the ones that Danny was financially supporting closed. Yeah, I can only do so much. Hey, full combo. So does this let you have the options that original uh, Poppin' does, like where you can control the speed and... Yeah, that's the thing. If you've played Poppin' music for any length of time, there's an options menu you can bring up before the song, allowing you to turn on random mode, uh, most importantly to turn on high speed mode to make the notes actually readable. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We'll get to that. Uh, your first concern with this may be, hey, this is a rhythm game you play on an HDTV. I was getting a lot of goods there. Maybe we can uh, go into the options and adjust the timing. Oh, uh, you, 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 you can't adjust the timing. It's, it's, what? That's not a thing you can do. What? But at least you're thinking, you know what? I'm experienced with popping music. I'm all into that nine key mode. Give me the full nine buttons. None of this five key business. It maxes out at five buttons. You can also do three. So, I just I just now looked at Jennifer's face. Those eyes. <laughs> so, um, let's see. Electric Boogaloo Funk mentions that this is from a Japanese developer named Voltex, whose other leases are Frogger 2 and Coffee Time Crosswords, which are two other Konami nice, XBLA nice. games. So that's good. Also, the song list you see here. Now let's go ahead and count these. One, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven, eight, nine... Ten. Ten songs. Uh, Slabity, the, uh, the, Ar the Austin, the Austin Arcade that was in the Church of Scientology was, uh, oh god, what was that? That was La Fun. That was La Fun, yeah. Rip La Fun. And for the song list, it's a weird mix of what was at the time the latest poppin' music combined with the earliest poppin' musics. Like, this song, I think, is from Poppin' Music 2? It is! Uh, yes, this was an XBLA game, right? Yes, this was on XBLA. It, XBLA, it cost $10, and it's still up, and it's actually backward compatible with the new Xbox if you really want to play it. 
Now yeah. what you see here... I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, I was gonna say, yeah, at least there are popping songs in this. I thought this was gonna be just all licensed stuff, but... Uh. No, they just... They took the earliest poppin' music songs, like three of them, and then a few from the most recent mixes, and then that's it. Now here, you're seeing me getting a lot of goods, and that's actually not the fault of either me or the uh, the timing. The fact is, this song had bad timing when it was back in Poppin' Music 2, and instead of fixing it, they just put it right into Beat and Groovy without fixing the timing or anything like that. It's a beloved tradition. <laughs> Weirdly enough, I think that's intentional, because when they brought over Beat Mania on PS2, there was a song called Gamble, which uh, infamously had bad timing. <laughs> And instead of fixing that for the U.S. release, they were like, no, the Americans can enjoy it, too. Ship it broken, on purpose. Okay, I knew about- I knew Gamble sucked. I didn't know that it had <laughs> bad timing. So this is an actual trend on Konami's part. Okay, I know- okay, I know that their- their nickname of the artist is Nappy. I didn't want to say that. I want to know their full name. I forgot what it was, and I wasn't going to look up Nappy into Google. Yeah, that's bad news. Oh, only um, 75k. Look at all those goods! I still got an A, though. Okay. And you're thinking, maybe I can go through the whole song list to unlock more songs or nine key mode. Uh, none of that happens. You just get the ten songs, and every time you clear a song, it kicks you back to the title screen. And that's why we're only going to play one more song. Let's do Betty. Hey, Betty. Betty, you look weird. <laughs> why are you in poppin' Multiple music? Multiple people say that these characters look like Bratz dolls, and they do. They really do. A little bit. So they Alex, have a, oh, they have one of my favorite songs. Should we go ahead and finish up with uh, 100 Second Kitchen they have Battle? Yeah, Starbucks. They have actually some okay things here. Why? Yeah, it's just a shame. There's only 10 songs, and if you look at the the oh, note yeah. ratings there, notice it goes up to eight. Do any uh, of these go up to eight? They go up to three. This is the hardest song in the game, <laughs> which makes me think maybe they were uh, planning to sell DLC. Maybe Nine Key Mode would have been a, D a DLC add-on, and then this, this just didn't sell. All right, yeah, let's let's do the 100 second kitchen battle, which is a okay. Great let song. me turn let me turn on random and high speed 2.5. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you can't do that. This is beaten groovy. 100 bits from Tank Catapult who says, for the record, let me say that comparing this game's art style to Brad Stalls is an insult to Brad Stalls. Yeah. Ooh, I agree. <laughs> it is very Bradsish. Oh god, it's the same character. I didn't even notice. So. The underlying music is good. The yes. few tracks that are in here. The gameplay, in theory, is good, but kind of lacking. It doesn't have any of the modifiers. As someone mentioned before, the fact that the pop coons don't disappear when you hit them just drives me up the fucking wall. <laughs> They're supposed to disappear in a little flourish, but no, they just kind of dribble off the bottom of the screen and it throws you off. I'm being that guy. I hate how slow they go. It pisses yeah. me off. Yeah, no high speed. You don't need it. You're only doing five key at most. This is also a window into Konami's, what I'm pretty sure is self-sabotage, because how could you be this incompetent? <laughs> you may argue with me for now, but you'll see some stuff later on that makes you think, okay, this had to be on purpose. Oh, the song's good, though. It is, and I'm so mad that it doesn't have speed up. I am... I am, I am becoming gamer mad. I am... The Orange Riot posits that they wouldn't be surprised if this game was uh, released to protect the patent. I get that vibe from it. Yeah, shout out to all the Bimani fans who are joker buying at this minute because <laughs> I am. This really exists and you can buy it for your new Xbox. You can even play it on it. Wait, really? Yeah. Okay, the artist is Naoko uh, Ishida. Okay, that's that's what I thought, but I didn't want to get it wrong. Thank you. And that's Beaten Groovy, a game that I paid 10 American dollars for and enjoyed for about, I don't know, 30 <laughs> minutes before I, I got through the whole song quote, list. enjoyed? Like, I hate this. Well, this also has an Xbox Live mode, uh, and it even supports the Xbox Live camera, if you can believe it, with a unique mode. Uh, let's go ahead and continue uh, the tradition by looking at the achievements. Okay. 90,000 or more. That's that's uh, that's kind of a problem considering some songs have offbeat timing, but I managed to do that. Congrats. Win a ranked match by 5,000 points or more. Folks, I actually played a ranked match of Beat and Gravy, <laughs> making me one of maybe three other humans to do so. Complete every song in three-button mode, just basic stuff. 
Play a hundred ranked matches. No. A hundred. Find someone else who has beaten Groovy and wants to play those ten songs online over and over and over and over again. And do it a hundred times. Chat shouting ponage at you. <laughs> also, earn a perfect rating on every offbeat song in arcade mode. Have fun, asshole. Literally unachievable. <laughs> it's, it's not. You can't. I think some people have, but I'm pretty sure they cheated. Uh, anyway, my point is, Beat and Groovy, they tried to bring over pop and music, and they did everything wrong. Every possible thing. I really think there was some executive who was all like, look, Americans really want to play pop and music. Can you please just make anything? Can, can you just do this? And it got assigned to some guy who had the mindset of, oh, they won't ask me to do things in the future if I do it really shitty. <laughs> Well, that was by Voltex, uh, the, and Konami used them for two other games, so nice. who knows. Beat and Groovy. Uh, along with pop and music for the Wii, the only times pop and music has ever been seen stateside. Imani fans, eat your heart out. By which I mean eat shit. I, I eat shit every day. Real quick, you are being asked a question that I do see sometimes in chat whenever you play the 360. Yeah. Danny, your icon. It's a man kissing a horse. Or possibly a mule. I'm not I'm not quite sure. So most people have asked, it is not Sting and it is not a custom icon. This was an official I so if you do not remember the Halcyon can I show Why don't you show like, show yeah. my dashboard while you're so, at it? So the Halcyon <laughs> days of the best the best days of three sixty, you could download a whole a so, shit ton of the apps. Look in the upper right, that's my favorite ions. part. It tells it tells you everyone that I have no money. <laughs> Xbox telling on me. I think that Picture is from, like, uh, some kind of Kodak promotional thing that's all like, oh, look at these beautiful photographs you can put as your gamer picture. It was from an Olympics thing. That's what it was. It was from one of the Olympics games. <laughs> okay, back to the... <laughs> so, so it's funny, because I actually used to theme my uh, backgrounds and my avatars and everything to whatever sponsor stuff I could get. And for, I think the last thing I did give was, me a, like... Give me an interstitial, if you would. <laughs> I think the last thing I did was, like, both Tractor and, um... You downloaded... Theme. You downloaded the Lady Antebellum... <laughs> Team and profile pictures before they had to change their name out of shame. Yeah, good for them. Even back then, I thought it was weird. Like, Lady Antebellum? Really? That's weird, that's yeah. What, that's what you want to name your country band? Real quick, IS Does Things donates 25 bits. Thank you so much. They say, Armored Core 4 answers, looks at your beaten groovy achievements, and says, hold my beer. Oh, yeah. There were tons of impossible achievements made back in the day. I've... I've wanted to get into that, because it's especially interesting for, like, connect achievements that involved multiple people. Uh, what some achievement hunters eventually did was construct fake people out of, like, brooms and wire hangers and stuff. And just sat them in front of the connect and was like, hey, this is my friend. Please unlock the achievement. Hey! Anyway, our next game is Rocket Knight. Hey, no! You can't reveal that to me like that! Maybe that's a maybe that's a future stream idea. We try to construct another human to fool the uh, connect into giving us multiplayer achievements. You you can't. <laughs> I'm trying to do my job. Of, of of and I just. And even that's nothing compared to the links people went through to get the uh, the Beatles rock band harmony achievements. Wait 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 wait. Okay, I I know we need to pay attention to the game here, but. There all these stories will be told in time. I'm just I'm just wetting your whistle for the future. <laughs> So, for God knows whatever reason, Konami brought, brought back Rocket Knight out of a deep slumber for a release in, what did it say, 2010, 2011? This is what it looks like. Hey, I'm just going to say it. He looks like one of those furry characters that gets drawn by someone who's never drawn furries before. Like when it, you, know, you know those like people who obviously only draw anime, and then they try to draw a furry, and it just looks really fucking weird, mm -hmm. and you don't know what it is? It's like that. That's what's going on, and it's pissing me off. This was handed over to Climax Graphics, who at the time were only known for motorcycle racing games, and they did at least one of the Silent Hill spinoffs. I want to say Silent Hill Zero. Uh, the one where you pick up a million portable TVs and put them in your inventory. Yes, Vagrant. If this does have off-brand generic serial vibes. All right, I'm gonna put in my headphones. Tony the Tiger's distant cousin. Now, when this came out, I hated it. I downloaded, I downloaded the demo and thought it was a massive piece of shit. I played it last night to test it out. I guess after playing hundreds of shitty platformers for Mascot Friday. I don't hate this. I think it's fine, actually. 
And just like Beat and Groovy, this is a game you can download and play on the new Xbox if you really want to. The graphics I won't defend, they are very bland. There he is, Sparkster! Just, He's back! I just do not like his design, I'm sorry. It's pretty bad. Uh, a lot of Xbox Live Arcade games have this generic look to them. Like they were designed on a limited budget, and obviously they told the artist, like, look, don't put too much effort into this, this is a $10 game that five people are gonna buy. But in terms of gameplay, the platforming structure here is good. It flows really well. It uses Sparkster's abilities nicely. I actually think that it's a step forward in terms of mechanics, because you don't have to hold the button to do your turbo attack. You can just do it any time. That's cool. And it's actually very flexible and kind of satisfying once you get your, your brain around it. I don't know why I feel so differently now, but man, back then, I just could not stand this game. I played the demo and was like, well, they fucked up another one. I I think, again, like you mentioned, you, you've played so many platformers, you've gotten a better sense of perspective. Yeah. In reality, this is not terrible, and considering who made it and what the budget probably was, it's surprisingly good. That said, I'm not going to tell you this is a hidden gem, because look at these gems, they're out in the open. <laughs> but this game does have problems, as we'll see in a little bit. These platforming sequences, though, they're better than I remember. Look, you can hover in the air, even. Well, for some reason, this the sub, this resub came through twice, uh, so I guess I have to say it twice. Okay. Uh, thank you to Mr. Smiley for the seven-month resub, Mr. Smiley says. Ben Carson has a Rona Lamau, Ben Carson has a Rona Rona Lamau. <laughs> I'll tell you who doesn't have a Rona. Sparkster. Nope. He's safe. He's, uh, cartoon characters are immune. Also, thank you. It's because, it, yeah, thank you. It's, it's because they all see his design and they stay more than six feet away. Sorry. <laughs> nice. No, 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 no encouraging, but thank you. Man. You did good. Thank you. I kind of understand this game's circumstances. It's maybe because of that I can appreciate it a little more. It was a small studio, obviously a side project. It wasn't going to be a major $60 release. And they could have just put out a giant hunk of shit like Beat and Groovy, but they put their own spin on it. I don't like it, but <laughs> it's it's there. And gameplay-wise, it's surprisingly inoffensive. Except for the next part, which uh, we'll get to. Is this a sewer? Are you already in a sewer? It's an outdoor sewer, Alex. These animals have class. Hey, I just want to say, Sparkster's world must smell awful. Oh yeah. That's the one thing you couldn't get from uh, Rocket Knight Adventures on Genesis, the smell. Beautiful graphics, great sound, awful smell. Is that a damage boost? Who speedruns this? They call out the Xbox 360 because you see Sparkster design turn 360 degrees and walk away. <laughs> it's really hard to look past. I mean, could I do better? No. But could they have hired someone else to do better? Probably. It just has... you know what I'm talking about, right? That era of Xbox Live Arcade generic character designs. Yes. Just dozens of games with immediately forgettable characters. Well, I guess I don't like this. Sometimes they lock the camera and make you fight a bunch of wolves. That seems kind of boring. A little bit. Yeah, I have a feeling this game's worst crime is genericness. Which... Yeah, it is painfully generic. But it does try to keep a lot of features from the original game. Uh, you remember remember in Rocket Knight Adventures when you would grab a power-up and just go flying off into the air at a million miles an hour? Yeah. This game also has flying sequences. That was like my favorite part of the original Genesis version. Like they cut out the music until you grab that icon and all of a sudden it's like, whoa, I'm out of control, baby. And I'm a possum or something. And this is how this game handles flying sequences. I hope it's cool. Hang on, you'll find out. Get ready to take off at a billion miles an hour! Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh my god! Yeah, you see? Yay. These sequences go on for fucking ever. It's an auto-scrolling sequence, there's pretty much one of these for every regular level in the game, and they just bring the game down instantly. It sucks that they put a timer up there because you know exactly how much time you're spending in these incredibly boring levels. I think this first one is like four minutes long and it feels like it. That said, like the platforming parts, it's not horrible. It's not something you, you're going to be in physical pain to play, but it also kind of misses the point of the original. Like they were just throwing enemies at you from the side of the screen. You had to figure out what to do in the space of a half second. And here it's just like a, a leisurely stroll through the sky. Yeah, this is kind of sedate. Mm-hmm. That's not what Sparkster is. He is not sedate. He's on all kinds of uppers. He is. He is absolutely going Just whacked wild. out of his mind, right? Yeah, he is. But here he's all like, oh, don't worry. I'm fine. It's okay. I'm just taking my rocket pack through the sky. Very normally. All right. Uh, Ragu says, I remember the director saying on forums that he didn't like the original uh, Rock Knight Adventure because it wasn't consistent enough. Ah, I know that guy. <laughs> he yelled at me because I said this game was bad. Sorry, Danny. <laughs> uh, if you want to yell at us again, our uh, Twitter is twitter.com slash RetroPilesHQ. Pretty sure he doesn't work for Konami at this point. Okay, well, he could still yell at you if you want. Oh yeah, I, I anytime. Just, I'll take the hit, I'll take the hit. Just just do it to, do it to, the, to the Twitter account. Another thing I didn't get about this game is if you've noticed those loading screen messages, they play right before the cutscenes that show exactly what was described in the text. So after this level, actually I think it's a couple levels, before they reveal the boss, the loading screen says, oh, Axel and his rival were ready to fight, but then a boss jumps out of nowhere to attack him. And then the cutscene plays and it's all like, I'm gonna get you, rival character. Uh oh, a boss came out of nowhere. <laughs> Kinda like just teams weren't talking to each other. Like, maybe we shouldn't spoil what's going to happen in the text that players have to read. <laughs> just, just little things. So it's fine. It's okay. Oh, this is the same level! Yeah, we're still on this level. I think I also like the flying sequences in Rocket Knight, the original, because they took like 30 seconds instead of 2.55 and counting. Oh There's my. checkpoints in these. I don't... Does it feel kind of... I'm getting an emptiness, like, with these levels. I, I, I mean, they look filled, but something feels very empty about them. Is it because all the trees look kind of... They have that look. They, they don't look very distinctive from one another. And that's, I, I get it, limited assets, but it's just kind of a sea of just... There's, yeah, I think I, I think this is the first game we've played tonight where I kind of feel bad that it turned out the way it did. There's a there's good here. It can be fun. It's just very obviously hampered by its budget and Konami being Konami at the time. This game is a rocket, not uh, <laughs> the equivalent of an unflavored rice cake. Yeah, it's an emptiness somewhere in my soul. If people are happy. Yeah. Hey, we're about to hit minute four of this auto scroller. It's really the fact the game is so uneven that makes it hard to recommend. If it was all platforming, I would say, sure, when this goes on sale for five bucks, buy it. But considering there's so many auto-scrollers that go nowhere and add nothing to the game, it's just... It's just... That's what I have to say. We'll finish this guy off and then move on. But, that's like my poor possum boy. I know. You waited all these years for him to come back and he comes back like this. No Act Zero. They could have. They could have made him gritty. Possums hey. bred underground, only to fight in prison. In prison. Possum prison. Oh man, he and uh. Oh, what's that guy's name? How could I forget that guy's name? He literally lives on the prison planet. Willy Wombat. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Why don't they do a gritty reboot of Willy Wombat? It already takes place on the prison planet. Like. Possum prison, by the way, is my favorite Toadie song. And just before we hit the five-minute mark, we have completed the auto-scroller. 
Uh, I don't know how much more game there is after this because I've never made it past this level. This is the first time I've done it. <laughs> Usually I get too bored to continue. <laughs> but compared to the outright badness of Beaten Groovy and Bomberman Axe Zero, we know things could be way worse. Way, way, way worse. Chad asking us to compare this to the recent Buzzies. I'd say it's very similar in generic. Oh, it's very much on that level, yeah. yeah. Zephyrian Capital is chaos. Well, I don't need to watch the next cutscene because I know what's going to happen. Next up, good news fans of classic Konami franchises. They did you good with Rocket Knight, and they did you even better with Russian Attack Expatriate. Hey, I had to ask Danny about this because I saw this when I was doing the tweets. I've never heard of this game before, and I had to take a second to think to myself there. To, to just, I, I'm sorry. I. Yeah, they made a gritty reboot of Russian Attack. <laughs> this is it. This really happened. Now, this one I didn't buy. This is just a trial. I had to go back through my uh, my download list. This game is rated M for Mature, so you adult gamers, don't worry. This isn't a game for kids. Good, good. This is by Vatra Games, who made this and Silent Hill Downpour, which was so bad that it killed the series. They didn't make any more games after this. C cool, cool. Downpour was the one with the uh, the corn intro song. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that one! Yeah, all right, all right, all right. Some people here have probably played Downpour. I'm not one of them. I just want to know what the Russian attack expatriate, which, what a name. I just want to know what the plot is, because... So the original game, uh, what was it? You parachuted into enemy territory, and then you had to stab your way through hundreds of dudes trying to rescue POWs or something? Mm -hmm. And that was all the story they gave you. Here, though, they flesh that out. They really flesh that out. I'm a rookie. Travel back to Siberia, somewhere in Russia. Okay. 1908? Really? The old Tunguska event. We can thank that for Russian attack. Did I, did I, did I misread that? Did it say you're in Siberia in 1908 or is that 1980? That was 1908. Back when the meteor that killed the dinosaurs first hit the planet. Okay. That's what we call the Tunguska event. All right. <laughs> Can I beat this in five minutes? Unfortunately, no. Uh, we're doing a time skip here. All the way forward to 2012. You remember 2012, right? Wait, 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 wait. An, unfrozen, an unfrozen, unfrozen caveman warrior? Uh, maybe. To send a man in to infiltrate Kant's prison and get us some. I've never really paid attention to this intro. Okay, but okay, so the event just made a big hole where they put all their prisoners. Yeah. The worst hellhole in Russia. The worst hellhole in Russia. You men have been assigned. This classic XBLA using. Using uh, pre-production art for cutscenes. Masters of stealth tactics, night combat. No, we cannot afford a single animation frame. Pan, I say pan. You are one sneaky bunch of ninja badasses. Sneaky I... bunch of ninja badasses. Your objectives. You will make contact with Gibson, and you will bring him home. Gentlemen, do not get caught. I just want to know what the expatriate thing is, because it makes it sound like you know you defected from America. I don't think that's the case. I could be wrong, though. I've never actually played through it. Oh man, the game just started and we're already being experimented on. Cool, honestly. Yeah, shake the camera. Do not, under any circumstance, draw a second animation frame. Oh no, I didn't know this, but the Demon Souls remake uh, also uses still animatics instead of pre-rendered cutscenes. <laughs> That makes me so sad. Oh, that's so sad. Hey, Blue Point knows what they're doing, as you can see here. What is this font? <laughs> Wait, Blue Point made this? No. Okay, I was just fucking around. Okay. Hey, that font sucked. I'm sorry. So, just looking at this, do you think it's gritty enough? I. Now, Al, 
Alex, you may not remember this, but something important happened around 2011 or 2012, and that something was a game called Shadow Complex. Mm. Konami looked at that, and they thought, oh, we want some of that money. But we're not going to spend any money to make it. And that's how this game happened. Here, eat this knife. <laughs> this is a nice big knife. Slower, slower, slower. I'd have already beaten level two of the NES version. Yeah, by I was this gonna point. say quote most people in like game would have started by now. Yeah. <laughs> so yep, this is a gritty military themed Metroidvania game, which was a thing for like the year this came out and then at no point afterwards it's entirely because of shadow complex this game has a lot of stealth it also has a weak attack and a strong attack as mandated by gaming of that era you can hide inside doors Shh. gotta wait this guy out Got him! Sucker. Cool. From what I've played, this game is not good. <laughs> but the fact that it exists is pretty amazing to me. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. When I when I saw Gritty Reboot of Russian Attack, I just started to lose it because, I'm sorry, that's really funny to me. A thing people may not know is there was a pseudo-sequel to Russian Attack released in arcades. It was called M.I.A. Mission in Action. Missing in Action. Mm -hmm. That game's pretty decent, even if no one's ever heard of it. And I would say it's way better than this. Are you going to use the knife to... Yeah, it's a multi-purpose knife. Oh, I was joking, but you are. Cool. Damn, can't cut these bars with this knife. <laughs> can't you just stab the... Oh. Well, hello to you too, sunshine. I hate that font. I hate that font. It looks like that's they... like squished papyrus. Yeah, yeah. It looks <laughs> it, it looks like they 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 messed up like some. I I don't know what it is. Man, that guy is made of meat. Looks way better in the character portrait. Prison doctor. Dr. Krinkoff. You know that tweet about calling the Grinch the Grink? <laughs> that was a good tweet. I think about that tweet a lot. Um, yeah, it's compressed. It's, it's, I don't know what this font is, but it looks like someone, it's like when you're resizing something in Photoshop and your hand slips and you accidentally get all squishy. <laughs> yeah, you and squish it. looks really it. stupid. It's See, like, okay. See, the more time you spend squinting at the text trying to read it, that's more playtime. That's inflated playtime, baby. You get your six to, eight, six to eight hour experience from squinting. You just pretended to hand us something. Now, hold on. I'm going to show... Okay, I don't want to cover up too much of the screen, but... You know what this reminds me of? What? I'm just going to put this on the screen here. I was going to. Hold on. You messed up. I did. It's like this, but it's like when you accidentally do that. <laughs> that's perfect. And yeah, like like that, like that. That's that's it. That's what Good. it looks like. Oh man. I guess there weren't many Metroidvania-style military combat games. It's just this and Shadow Complex and maybe a couple others that I've completely forgotten about. But to, to throw Russian attack into the, the formula is not something I expected. <laughs> now everyone's posting their squished rollos, thank you. Good. Oh yeah, that's something you can do. Mm -hmm. oh, that's right, there's context-sensitive kills. A lot of blood spurting everywhere. Later they did this with Castlevania. I mean, Lords of Shadow era Castlevania, and that version apparently turned out better than this. Right, what was that called? Mirror of Fate, I think? Oh, oh yeah, I think I've actually heard of that one. Um, 
Real quick, Uzi, uh, the quote from Destructoid here. Konami told me to Google Sistema, a Russian martial art that can utilize weapons like knives. The guy at Vatra, the guys at Vatra work to incorporate actual Sistema moves into the animations. Boop. You see that? Where'd we go? Right here. Where'd I go? I don't. I don't think this guy cares. So again, just gonna ask. I'm sorry if I missed it in in the dialogue, but what are you an expatriate of? Oh, I don't know. I wasn't paying attention. Like, are you? Because expatriate, and you're. It makes it sound like you're an. Uh, uh, Maybe it has know. some kind of double meaning through the end of the game. Uh, I'd have to play it to find out, though. I don't. Oh, they, didn't they make a Batman game like this? That freaking uh, Arkham Batman game for Vita? They turned it into a weird Metroidvania that no one liked. So this was a trend for a short amount of time. Oh, it's just expatriate is probably just a bad pun like expatriate. I hate this. That sucks then. <laughs> Never it mind. would just be a lot funnier if he's like... If he was just like, I, I rebuke America. This, there are some... Some shit like I that. will go stab people in a prison elsewhere in the world, thank you. Yeah, other than the fact that this is a Russian attack game, there's little surprises here. It's all based on current trends, uh, Konami leveraging one of its studios that was already working on a major game. Hoping they would get a little bit more out of their investment, I guess, as they did with uh, Mercury Steam and the Lords of Shadow games. This one, though, has been pretty much entirely forgotten, and like, it didn't take long for that to happen. <laughs> Uh, Jordan says that was developed in Austin, and the company sold a map system from the game we were developing also in Austin. <laughs> nice! Beautiful! Austin stealing from other Austinites. You love to see it. So, with me going into the shadows, uh, so goes Russian Attack Expatriate. I bet five minutes from now you'll have completely forgotten you've ever seen a single bit of gameplay footage from it. Good. That's Russian Attack Expatriate. <laughs> Let's move on to something else. What, what's your favorite game we've shown so far, Alex? I hate to say it, but probably Beat and Groovy. Wow. Incredible. Oh, that's right. I have to do something different for this one. Uh, Xbox 360 has a handy pins feature, which allows you to group together all the games you want to play in a stream, for instance, except for delisted games. So I have to go through Alex's Xbox's game list, which is 143 titles long. Nice! Scroll all the way to the end, past all the Silver Dollar Games games we bought right at the end of x mm hmm And that's where I'm gonna find the game with no cover art that is called... There it is. This one. Turtles in Time Reshelled. Wait. There they go. No, oh God, save them! The turtles got sucked into Ubisoft. Oh, God, Ubisoft, no! A what? fate worse than death. What are you doing? Now, this game you can't buy anymore. So if this looks good, uh, sorry, you're not allowed to buy it. Also, notice, if you will, the horrible uh, horizontal tearing around the middle of the screen, which is present through the entire game. Hey, I just wanted to say this also has the animating the uh, whatever art yep. cuts things. They, they stretched that one turtle's mouth to make him look like he was talking. <laughs> it looked really weird. I don't know. I, I don't think I... No, I have seen this. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Pizza power! Uh oh Sorry, honey. It has that opening riff making you think, oh yeah, they redid the soundtrack. But no, they didn't. They just replaced the soundtrack with new songs that suck. Well, it has multiplayer. It does have multiplayer and local multiplayer at that. So that's that's something in its favor. Yeah, I want to overwrite. We gotta be Donatello, the best turtle. Who agrees with me? Who disagrees? You're wrong. I I don't. I, is he the wait? Did, no, he does machines. He does machines. Yeah. Okay. And he likes purple, so he's basically Danny, mm -hmm. who loves. There is nothing Danny loves more than doing tech support and working on tech. Oh, I love it. <laughs> it, it makes you very normal. I'm at my least aggravated when I'm trying to uh, <laughs> troubleshoot something beyond my control. <laughs> So right away, if you're familiar with the arcade game, uh, 
Uh, it's a sequel to the 87 Turtles beat em up. Very similar. A little bit upgraded in terms of graphics and mechanics, but otherwise you pick a turtle and you start whacking on foot soldiers. That game, though, played like a beat em up. This game, I don't know what it is, because it gives you eight way control for. I don't even know why. You can attack down, you can attack up, and that completely breaks what should be a very straightforward beat em up. Because you can attack dudes in the background or the foreground. You can hold off in some direction on the analog stick and not aim where you want to aim. It's a, it's a bit of a problem. That when you scroll the screen, you can't help but notice that tearing. They never fix that. I mean, why bother when the game's going to be available for like six months? Hey, did they mention why they delisted it? Was because it sucked, or...? Oh no, they just... the license ran out. Oh, it's okay. never because the game sucks. Never. <laughs> Beaten Groovy is still available. Fair enough. I... I mean, I will say this does look a little more animated than uh, Rocket Knight Adventure. I think it's a little more visually interesting. It's... they put but... effort into remaking it. The original was a pixel game. It was all 2D. They had to redo all the graphics for this, but... To what end, it just kind of looks... It's got that, that thing that's hard to put into words, that glossy sheen of low-budget Xbox Live Arcade games. Yes, yes, yes. I, I actually I know exactly what you're talking about, yeah. where you're like, they didn't put their whole ass into the budget, but they only put in enough to, like, make... Like, do... Like, I don't want to call them cheap tricks. That doesn't seem nice to the devs, but, like, you... Squish. Well, but, like, you know, little, little, little things to make the game look a bit more polished than it actually is. Yeah, instead of cutting corners literally everywhere. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, we put some polish here. Look, we've got some lighting. Some poor dev who's got like 20 games to work on that are all due in a <laughs> month. They're like, fine! You want bloom lighting? I'll do some fucking bloom lighting! I want to see my kids! <laughs> <laughs> the good news, though, is I think Konami learned their lesson after this, and their later arcade ports of The Simpsons and their X-Men arcade games were just straight ports, using the original graphics and uh, just pretty much being very faithful to the originals. And like this game, those games are also now unavailable. You can't buy them. Yeah, that fucking sucks. So everyone got their... their dream became reality when the Simpsons arcade game was available for purchase for less than a year before it was gone forever. Locked away in the Disney vault. Hey, yeah, actually! Let's see, uh, multiple people in chat talking about how this game is a little, how the turtles look too rounded, and now everyone's calling them blombies. So. It just looks weird, right? It's, it's another one of those things that I'm not an artist, so I can't put into words. It just looks wrong. It does. Let's see, every aspect of this is aesthetically, every aspect of this aesthetically versus the original. Pretty much. The original was a good looking game, real striking colors, great animation, great music. Another complaint is this is based on the arcade version, which is lesser known and lesser liked than the later Super Nintendo version. Alley Cat Blues. That version added a couple levels and is generally just more complete. But this one is just a fucked up version of the arcade game. I mean, the lighting is... existent. <laughs> there is lighting. Oh, I also want to tell you my one favorite thing about having to remake these games. <laughs> uh, one thing Microsoft has a cow about, to use a 90s vernacular, I guess. No one's ever said that outside of Bart Simpson. No. One of the things Microsoft freaked out about was old games using audio quality that's less than absolute perfect Dolby Surround. So, like, the voices and sound effects in, say, the X-Men arcade game were recorded at, like, what, 11 hertz, 22 hertz? Yeah. 22k hertz, and Microsoft was like, no, you cannot release this in this form, it's bad. What Konami had to do was rehire the original actors who played the characters in the arcade X-Men game from 1992, and make them re-record their lines, not to make them better, but just to re-say them in the new quality. <laughs> so all that ridiculous dialogue, like Ma Magneto saying, welcome to die, that guy had to come back 20 years later and say, welcome to die, in the same voice. Just to have better audio quality. Isn't that, that is the dumbest hilarious. shit you can imagine? Yes. Just use the old sound effects. 
Here's what you do, Konami. You, you load it up in Audacity, you select Save As, and then you click the uh, the Dolby Surround Microsoft option. <laughs> That's how you they do it. They won't know. They won't They'll know. They'll never know the difference. They're, they're, you don't gotta uh, rehire the Colossus guy to go Whoa! into a microphone. Mm -hmm. Every, everybody could have saved so much work. But yeah, those are just a few things that I don't like about these remakes. And this is one of them. Turtles in Time. Uh, you are being corrected. Yeah. Uh, X-Men Arcade had new actors re-record them because there was a legal issue with the old actors. Oh, they didn't even get the old actors. Well, even better. That sucks. <laughs> Man. What do you think uh, Colossus's reaction to that news was? I think, I think, I think his reaction was, Whoa! We done? We're done. <laughs> oh, that X-Men game's great. We should play that sometime. But let's go simpler. Simpler? That was, uh, that was a major remake. They put it to polygons. It played really differently. It was nothing like the original. How about an early emulated take on a Konami classic? What do you say we play a little bit of XBLA Contra? Okay. All right. This should be easy to do well. I want to say this was the first batch of XBLA releases. Just no frills, $5 ports of classic arcade games like Missile Command, Centipede, and in this case, Contra. Using Digital Eclipse's digital arcade emulation technology. Let's jump right in. Okay. Well, it's, it's Contra, so... Now, first thing you'll notice is you can't hear the audio because it's mixed as low as it can possibly go. I'm not even sure if Alex can pump it high enough for it to be audible. Second thing you're going to notice is the special effects. You see those explosions? Hey, I'm going to say it. I'm sorry, but that looks like shit. No, it's great. No, no. It looks so good, it slows down the game in places where it didn't slow down to begin with. <laughs> Look at that effect on the spread gun. Uh, another thing you'll notice is the buttons are mapped to A is shoot and B is jump. So you have to hold the controller weird. That's okay. After this, we'll go into the menu and fix that. Mm, I don't like this. Look at all this slowdown. It's so good gotta slow down to make to make explosions look that good. Yeah, I love these early enhanced XBLA games. Just gotta add value. People won't like just straight up the original game. You gotta add smoke effects and weird explosions. And th we gotta be able to fix that, right? Let's let's go back. Alright. So we'll go into the options. I'll actually turn it up on my end so it's actually audible for us. Controls. Right. Here's the controls. You cannot change the controls. It only tells you what the controls are. <laughs> I hate that there's a control screen that you can't do shit about to change. It's just like, nope, this is how it is. You don't like it? Too bad. You can figure out how to play Contra if you don't know how. Oh! And I guess you actually need to be in the game to customize the game settings. So let's go ahead and restart. Okay, so so there are settings you could. Like maybe we want to, maybe we want to turn off that blazingly bright <laughs> wallpaper around the game screen. You can change the graphics to original to get rid of the uh, embellishments like the smoke and stuff. Thank you. You can change the screen size to make it look like this. Yes, make it blombi. <laughs> you cannot you cannot get rid of that wallpaper. It is bright, it will burn the shit out of your plasma TV, and you're gonna like it because you get to play Contra on your new Xbox. This is so blombi! This is the blombiest version of Contra I ever did see. Oh, you don't like this? You don't like how it's stretched out like this? We can fix that. Hang on. There we go. That's that's way better. Here we go. Oh my god, Danny, you are... Mm. That is the, the ultra-slim-fast version of Contra. Okay, no, hold on, hold on. Who does this benefit? <laughs> Were there, like, skinny TVs that needed this to happen? Sorry, everybody. 
Alex is secretly sabotaging the screen while I can't see it. I trust your judgment. I'm gonna try and play like this. There's a one credit clear in ultra skinny mode. Okay, good luck! Did they sell like fucked up monitors that were just... <laughs> they look like this? Wow, this is actually real hard to see. Now there's people who can finish NES Contra in under 10 minutes, people who can one credit clear Arcade Contra. I say you haven't lived until you've played Contra like this. This is the real challenge. Especially when you leave uh, the graphical enhancements on so there's all kinds of blurry textures flying in front of your face. Okay, the world record speedrun of this is under 5 minutes. Beautiful. Oh yeah, Arcade Contra is a very short game. But I can guarantee you they didn't play it like this. Danny, do you pronounce Tate like Tate or like Rotate? It's Tate, damn it. <laughs> it's okay, a Japanese well, I term. It's like Tate, because I'm. It's not Tate. Hold on, I don't think this is accurate. What are you, some YouTuber? Pronounce it right. There we go. I like that the overlaid graphics sometimes display on the wrong screen, too. Mm -hmm. I feel like if I, if I play more of this, I may cause lasting damage to my eyes, so I think I'm just gonna beat this boss and then move on. But if you want to play Contra on your new Xbox, by which I mean, yes, this is still available, and it's backward compatible with the Xbox Series S and X, you could do that. Everyone talking about new Tate, new... Oh, stop it. <laughs> I should probably get rid of Rolo. Thank you all for humoring me with You had Rolo up there? Yeah, he's skinny mode Rolo! <laughs> oh yeah, there he is! <laughs> cool. This is fine. The ultimate way of playing Contra on your Xbox Series system. Blessedly backward compatible with the new hardware. Thank you, Konami. Thank you. Look at that, look at that burning on the bridge, you see that? Oh, that's good. It's that's just funny. going back and forth. It's so... Please... I hate this mode! <laughs> Should we move on? Yeah, let's... Let's move on. Thank you for banning Danny. I am banning him myself. Alright, so we've covered many of Konami's biggest franchises. Rocket Knight. Mm -hmm. Contra. Uh, Russian Attack, I guess. It's time for the Big Kahuna. A series that we played very recently, in fact. Yeah. We played a lot of Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Alex finished it for his very first time. I'm very proud of him. And now we're going to experience Castlevania in HD with Castlevania Harmony of Despair. Hmm. I was going to ask if this is good, but so far this game, this stream has had a very bad track record, so... Well, this game had a mixed reception. I'm going to leave it up to the, the viewer to decide what your opinion is. This is good. Oh no. Oh no. Oh my god. So I saw this when this first came out, and I thought, oh my god, this premise sounds dog shit. This game's gonna be horrible. So I bought it. I bought this new at release, and I played a bunch of it. And I ironically love this game. I put together a really basic build of one of the characters so I can just show off the first level and okay. how it basically goes. I did a, uh, yeah, I got Soma with a little bit of DLC equipment so he's slightly more powerful than he would be otherwise. Let's go ahead and jump right into level one. <laughs> This takes the backgrounds from all previous Metroidvania-style Castlevania games and stitches them together to make these weird uh, Frankenstein maps that were designed to be explored in multiplayer. Turn things down on the right. There we go. Oh, this game is cool. Bad game. People people have real mixed reactions. I will say, I have never seen chat so mixed on a game. Now, there's different characters. They all have different abilities. Alucard, unfortunately, is one of the most boring. He can use a lot of different equipment, but he doesn't level up in any meaningful way. Uh, Soma up here, though. Every so often when you kill an enemy, you absorb its soul, and that makes you a little bit more powerful, and it gives you access to an exclusive attack. So some characters you can level up gradually through playing these levels over and over again with a group of, uh, I guess, MMO-styled adventures. It's pretty much it's pretty much like a MMO light. You can only have up to six players, but they're all kind of exploring different parts of these incredibly massive maps. Holy! Danny! 
Yay! <laughs> and you want to know what the worst part is? I love this game. I really like this game. I had a ton of fun with it. It shouldn't work. It's just lazy reuse of existing assets, and yet something about it is really compelling, and I cannot explain to you why or how. Just all the different characters you can level up, your different options, you get so much equipment. The fact that there's a loot system, you open up treasure chests throughout the thing and it gives you randomly distributed items. Sometimes it's really good stuff that breaks the game. There's hidden stuff like, uh... Oh, I hate this. those guys! Oh yeah, you love this part. No! Oh, oh no, I remember the- no, no! Get that- get their ass! Get their ass! <laughs> no more flea men! As of a couple weeks ago, Alex is enemy to all flea men and Medusa heads. Alright, I'm seeing this compared to Outfoxies, Monster Hunter, and Maple Story, so... It does have a Monster Hunter aspect to it, yeah. The fact that you have to explore this huge open area in search of a boss at the end, and then a group of adventurers has to work together to take it down. Very Monster Hunter-esque. Which you would think clashes with the Metroidvania formula, right? <laughs> Which is like, it's based on... You know what a Metroidvania is. I don't have to explain. Alex, explain what a Metroidvania is. I'm pretty sure that's copyright someone who isn't me. No, it belongs to you now. I would rather not, but um, I, I, I don't want to take possession of it, but it's like basically... It's an explore -em up Yeah. Where you level, you level yourself up, and the main objective is, well, is getting yourself prepared to explore as much as possible through a single setting. That's Maybe a pretty good explanation. So, did you play this alone or, or multiplayer? Cause... I played this alone. <laughs> it was a very lonely adventure from the, the bottom. Uh, in fact, there's a lot of tedium in this game that I can only assume would be less tedious with multiple players. But it is actually possible to play through it in single player mode. And unfortunately, the multiplayer is online only. Oh, bullshit! I wanted to play! But, when this game was ported to PS3, they added a local multiplayer mode. Really? Yeah. So you'd think, uh, you know, this version that has all the DLC that people spend a lot of money on, including me, you'd think they'd update it to add the local multiplayer, right? I already can tell the answer by your tone. Yeah, the they did, they the did not. Joke would be, yeah. They absolutely did not. That really sucks because we just got an offer for, for fucking Car Krunko to like fucking play this with us. First of all, not now. Give give it like give us like six give, at least six months. Let's wait till things calm down in the world. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, I I I don't know if if we can. I'd like to, but this game's really fun, and I'd like to play it, uh, preferably the PS3 version in local multiplayer. I do have experience playing the online multiplayer in this, and let me tell you, this game was a huge, huge, huge hit in Japan, because the only time I was ever able to find matches, it was exclusively with groups of Japanese players. Was it like peak gaming times for Japan too? It was, and it was especially weird because unlike every other multiplayer experience I've had on Xbox Live, everyone was very nice and helpful and polite. <laughs> Okay, I've actually played, like, back when I was, like, I had an account to play the Japanese version of Home, just mm -hmm. to get to the exclusive IREM areas, to get exclusive IREM goodies. PlayStation goodies. Home. PlayStation Home, thank you, what I call it? Just Home. Okay. Okay. Well, I mean, it is Home. I always play the game of Home. But, um, especially now. Um, but, yeah, uh, I can say that uh, PlayStation Home America and PlayStation Home Japan, very different vibes, and the one in Japan, I... I was called a, a lot fewer people. Well, maybe they were saying slurs that I just didn't understand. I don't know. <laughs> it could be. But it was very different vibe and a very nice one. And the funny thing about playing with exclusively Japanese players is they have online etiquette that I've never seen from any other group of people. Yes. Like, at the start of every level, everyone would say hello. So the first thing you hear when you start up a level What's is... Up? What's up? What's up? Thanks. From like six different players all at once, and then at the end of the level, after you beat the boss, they're all like, "You take this, not bad, not bad, not bad." <laughs> hey, and it's actually really nice, and I really enjoyed it. <laughs> that reminds me of when I would play Splatoon again with players from Japan. It was always like that. It was always so much more friendly. Yeah, everyone's saying hello, and it actually got me into the habit of saying hello before games. And then I started playing with Americans again, and that did not happen. Yeah. 
It's it's not an American thing. You do not say hello or thanks. You say fuck you if anything. Say fuck you and a bunch of things I and will And your not favorite repeat. slurs, yeah. yeah. Which But you see some characters you know from Symphony of the Night. Uh, those Minotaur boys there that I just killed. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh man! The axe armors. Killing my mans! And there's that appeal too, where the more Castlevania games you've played, the more you can be like, oh yeah, I remember that. Only instead of it being enraging, like every other Konami remake, you're just kind of charmed. <laughs> I wanted to throw this in to show that not all these remakes and reimaginings were terrible. And even the ones where it seems like the worst idea in the world, it can actually surprise you. As this game did with me. I still enjoy it to this day. This is really cool, I gotta say. It's very creative. Mm -hmm. It sounds cheap, just on a, you know, picturing it. Being like, oh, they obviously had a budget here, they just had to reuse the old graphics. But they put more thought into it than you'd think. Yeah, for a limited budget game, this seems it's interesting. I will say that. Unlike all the other ones, games we played, this is at least interesting. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to show you my favorite part. Okay. This might be the thing to win you over. There's DLC characters. I saw people in chat talking about that. Including 8-bit Simon Belmont, who uh. you can make purple. Okay, so this seems like a Danny, Danny core game now. And we're going to play this level. And... I hope this results in at least one sale for this game. Because this would win me over if I was watching this stream. Grape Belmont. Wow! It's just Castlevania 1. You have to go through the whole game as Tiny Simon Belmont. Oh, your baby! Oh my god. Adorable. Hey, I like this game. A lot of movement tech. There's even, like, hidden stuff, like if you jump over the doorway, like in the original, it gives you money. It's just detail. It was made by people who, if you can imagine it, actually liked the source material and wanted to do right by it. By no means should this work. A multiplayer Castlevania using repurposed maps. And yet, I just, I can't help but love it. Danny, do I like Castlevania? I think you might. Shit. Good job getting me to like Castlevania. Castlevania's good. Or it was. Well. Hey, they can never take old games away from us. No matter how they, hard they, they can try. if they delist them. I was gonna say actually they can, but not not you and me, baby. If you have the cartridges though, you're safe. Uh, this was the last uh Ega game that uh Oh yeah, Ega them. left after this. This was his big master stroke. You can fight all the bosses, or you can just ignore them and let them all congregate. They're like, hey, hey, hey! I just appreciate that they put the entirety of the original Castlevania here and managed to put it all into one map. That you can actually go through, up and down and to the side, eventually fighting Dracula at the very end. I'll play a little bit more of this, but I highly recommend this game, even if it sounds stupid to you. It sure sounded stupid to me. You got the Medusa heads. Everything you love about Castlevania. Alex eyeing this game like you. Yeah, sorry. Play. I'm sorry, chat. <laughs> okay, your chat's normal. Good. Sorry for not moderating you for a minute. I was just literally staring transfixed at the screen. Like, is this okay? You know what this is to me. You know those videos you put on for tests and the cats, where it's just like a bunch of squirrels and stuff. This is like a. It's like cat TV for me. I'm just like transfixed. <laughs> it's Alex TV. Yeah, I'm like oh. Even put in all the hidden stuff. All the breakable blocks give you things. Jeez. Too many hits. Fix it, Konami. We'll fight Medusa and then move on. Oh okay. god, the damn bat's still here. <laughs> yeah, rescue cat TV. Nope, not interested in... Oh, you have to actually beat Medusa. Bullshit! Well, I'm screwed. You got this. Another thing involved <laughs> in playing this game in groups is people very quickly discovered the speedrun tech for this. Mm. So levels would be over in like five seconds. Just people with maxed out stats and items and things. I would be over here with my level one Soma being all like, wait up, guys. Mm -hmm. So for me, literally the experience of playing some of the levels in this game in multiplayer involved loading up the map 
hearing, hello, hi, hello, hi, hello, hi, how you doing there? Hello. And then like five seconds of me trying to progress. And then thanks, 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 thanks. And then the level ends. <laughs> it's a good time. Oh my God. Oh, this game rocks, Danny. I want to show off a tiny bit of this level too. Because okay. you can actually take Pixel Belmont, Pixel Simon Belmont, and put him in larger levels, and he looks pretty silly. Oh no, he's too big! You know this. I do know this. Oh. I know this very well. There's those horses you love. Those horses that kicked you around in the Coliseum. Oh, 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 don't remind me! Remember this guy? What are they doing hanging outside? They're in the wrong place. Well, they took some liberties. That's fair. You know what? That's fair. Just gonna dodge this guy. And now we're in Symphony of the Night. Okay, this is you can apparently play this 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 bad boy on the new Xbox. But does it have local multiplayer? That's It a... does not. It is compatible, but they didn't add in local multiplayer. A real shame. Feeling fine. <laughs> I wanted to spend a little bit more time than usual on this one just to show that not all of Konami's reboots and remakes were complete failures. Sometimes, possibly by sheer accident, they did the right thing and made something great. This is where death takes away all your weapons. I just want to say, now that I'm looking at this in a, a larger, you know, frame, I can see the whole castle here. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm gonna say it, I think, especially with all the broken stairs, I think that this should, uh, that, that the city city needs to condemn this castle. I'm sorry, this is in, <laughs> inhabit, uninhabitable. This is a death trap, to be sure, and not just including the death traps here. Well, it was established that it's a creature of chaos, so it's up to Dracula's whims how the castle turns out. Okay, so when the inspector show up, does he, like, just use his mind powers to make it normal? <laughs> no, he's just like, creature of chaos, nothing I can do. I can't control chaos, can you? Just, just let me know. I'd be glad to control chaos if that's something I could do, but uh, I don't think even a, a high and mighty building inspector can do that, in my opinion. That's that's Castlevania Harmony of Despair. I kind of went off off track there, but it's fine. It's a good game. Wow, we're already at the end here, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, well, well. Do we really want to do this? Is this something Twitch will let me get away with? Oh no, Chad was mentioning this. We've seen so many classic series. We just saw Castlevania, Contra, Rocket Knight, Russian Attack, uh, fucking Bomberman, the Ninja Turtles even? But there was one series we omitted in our coverage. One series- wow, you're, that thing's loud. Did yeah, you hear that? Ding. Alex has the special Xbox that makes noises. One of Konami's classic series also came to Xbox 360, that being Gradius. Chat is worried. They're saying, oh no. Gradius returned in a form you may not expect. No, no. Danny, no. Oh no. I have a uh -oh, physical copy no. of this game. I did not get the version that comes with a pillowcase. I'd like to get that someday. But as of right now, we're going to end this stream with Otomedius Excellent. All right, uh, let me get the boys ready. Danny, don't the talk boys. to me or my son ever again. <laughs> oh, you got two of them. Yeah, cool. just the two of us. We are going to go get banned, just the two put, put of on the us. Game. No. Get out of here, Rolos. No, I don't want to get banned, honey. I'm trying to lay the up. This is Gradius. Want to know what happened to Gradius? <laughs> Bye, Frappe. I don't blame you. This is what happened to Gradius. See you around, Frappe. Frappe just entered, saw this, and left. You know what? That's how I'm doing. Good. You made the All right, right choice. All um... This isn't just anime. This is 100% pure, unfiltered anime. This is like pure strain moe. For sure. Even even back then, this didn't didn't make a lot of sense to me. Like, why couldn't they just make a new Gradius? Did they have to? Well, they had to. 
One of these girls is a Belmont? She better be. I love the fan sub style uh, karaoke mm -hmm. down there. I feel like I'm watching this in an anime club. Hey, y'all heard of that new Naruto? I. When are they gonna pick that up? Someone's gotta license it. So the ships are babes now. The ships are babes. This is Anime Club the game. Oh yeah. Which one of them is the Belmont? Is it the one? I think, unfortunately, she's the DLC character I didn't buy, so we're not gonna see her. You know, you know what? If you wanna, you wanna be married to uh, to to any of any of the uh, Gradius ships, you go for it. How can I shame you? Yeah, I didn't buy any of this. Sorry to say. Wow, there's a lot of stuff you can buy too. Look at that, 37 items. Cool. Okay, will they let you at least? I I, I want to know what. I'm sorry. I'm I'm a fool. I I'm very curious at at what sexy Belmont spaceship looks like. Okay. Well, you got a bunch of characters here. You got you got Madoka. You got Dialtui. Got titanium, eh? She's dying. Yeah, it looks like it. That's me <laughs> she's right she's now. not in any shape to, to fly. Arnvol. Arnvol. Geshi Hanafuma, who is actually based on Getsufuma from the Famicom game Getsufuma Din. Okay. And Alba Alnoa. That's not a word, those aren't names. Eltron. Okay. Back to Madoka. Okay, so thank you to Kronko for looking this up. The character designs in this game were done by the arts behind Sergeant Frog, uh, Mine Yoshizaki. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Now, this was first in arcades, and for I don't know why, they added a touch screen to the game so you could choose your options and things. And you could also. Hold on, give me, give me a second here. You could also interact with your ships before you pick them. There you go. There's your one. You get one. That is a thing you can do with every character. On the bright side, you can adjust your loadout. All the different lasers here, from ripple lasers to twin lasers to gravity. Am I being banned yet? Yeah, uh... Good. <laughs> Chat just is revolting in general, but they're also revolting against us. Sorry. You're beautiful, Chat. Yeah, never change. That was just the thing. By the way, there were two of these games, only the second one ever came out here in the States. Supposedly the first one's better? I wouldn't know though, because it's region locked. Okay, so the villain in this game is from Tokimeki, so that's cool. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of references to old Konami games. Kind of less obvious ones, like if you're only used to their American output, you may not pick up on it. That's my experience, anyways. Please, please, please stop talking about their their their. their please, God! We've, we've covered this. We've we, we've covered that, and we can move on. It is a thing that needed discussing because what the fuck? But no, no, no you don't. Please. Now, one problem I had with this game is being completely unable to see the bullets in scenes like this. It's a little difficult. Hey, yeah. Where is? Anything. It's a very bright and colorful game, which I usually like, but not when there's tiny bullets flying around you need to dodge. I have to see the word areola one more time. I swear <laughs> to God. I'm sorry I did this to you, Alex. It's okay. It's all right. You had, to, you had to know it was coming, though. Yes, we discussed this ahead of time, and you saw my reaction. Uh huh. It was not a positive one. Thank you for only doing the horrible thing once, though. I hate this. I'm containing myself for the sake of art. Um, the Gradius Beach episode. <laughs> now the good news is, it sure as shit plays like Gradius. Uh, despite the aesthetics, this plays a whole lot like a shoot 'em up. Unfortunately, it's not a great one. 
I played through the game, I think, twice before I was able to one-credit clear it, which is not a great thing for a Gradius game. Especially for me, if I can one-credit clear a Gradius game, something's wrong. Yeah! Yeah, you've seen me play shmups. Okay, but you're actually, you're pretty good at shmups. I mean, compared to me. Um... Blech. Listen, you're 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 not a super shmup, and that's fine. No, we we but you know you're you're. That was, not... that was my response. Blah, blah. <laughs> I mean that that is yeah. It's but you're you're not. Don't don't. This is this is a, this is like this is this is a positive zone. Yeah, it still took me way less time than I thought it would take to. Oh look, look who it is. Hey, it's did they did they make the? They the, made the, the cat from Parodia sexy. <laughs> I think Alex is offended. Oh, are you offended? You don't like my booby spaceship game? Actually, what I'm most offended by is here's the cat ship, but she's not even on it, so I don't even get to see a fake cool sneak cat. Yeah. What the fuck? It was just the pilot, kind of a cop-out. That is a cop-out! If you're gonna make me look at anime babes like this, at least give them the cat ship. I'm actually kind of mad about that. I don't care how big the big baps are. Give them the <laughs> cat ship. Well, they're they're pretty big. Listen, the baps, yeah. They're, I'm, I'm not I'm not discounting the baps, but I, yeah, that ship. It looks like it looked generic and boring. That's actually my, my main issue with this is it's kind of generic looking. That's another one of the problems. Yeah, a lot of the detail and character is just in the character designs themselves, not so much the bosses or the stage design, especially not the stage design. It does have a good soundtrack. You saw down there, this is by Motoi Sakuraba, Mr. Wolf Team. Like, there's a lot of good things about this. It runs decently until it doesn't. The soundtrack's good. There's unlockables. You can unlock uh, different weapons from past Gradius games and put them in your loadout. So that's nice. Oh yeah, here's the part that made it so easy for me. The force field, it takes... At least five shots. Seven, possibly six or seven or eight for it to fully be destroyed. And you can easily regenerate it. That's how I was able to one credit clear this game. Yeah, yeah, this game does have a Dojin feel. It does have a... That's that's what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah, it's it's got that... It's got like a... What are they from? I don't fucking know. Yeah, me either. <laughs> We're not going to get to see him anyway in a cool character design. We just get to see another generic ass shit. It's the genericness that's kind of killing me. I guess that ties it back into the Xbox Live Arcade games we played. They just have that air of... Ah, uh, genericness. I wish I could put it more into specifics, but yeah, that's basically what it is. Can I even destroy this thing? That's, 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 that's my issue. There this it goes. <laughs> it took off down the street. She's, ah, oh, shit, they wanted to get a Contra Burger. Contra Burger? We're burger tonight. Want burger? Well, good luck. Hey, congratulate. Guess what? We're getting it. Nice. We're getting the big burg. I, the thing is, this it's just it's a generic. It, it just. It could have been so much more. Is what I came away from it feeling. This, if I were to rate this, this would this would be a two star game. It's not completely worthless, but if you're expecting a classic Gradius, it's very unsatisfying. Yeah, and, and, and again, my issue is that, like, listen, the Big Bap stuff, I can't, whatever, I'm not... I have I complex feelings about that, believe it or not. But it's like, but for me, it's, it's more like, you have these... Because... These intro... I, I will say, whatever you say about them, they are at least character designs, and they yeah. are at least vaguely interesting, while all the other designs in this are just kind of boring. Like, you see the cool cat ship, and you're like, oh, cool, I'm gonna see the... The cat ship from Parodius is a babe, I guess, but you don't even see it. Just like a mm -hmm. like a, a single like PNG and and then just a generic ship. And that's and in Konami's defense, adding anime babes to shoot 'em ups barely started with them. Cave, oh God! Cave was equally guilty with their Dodon Pachi series. Mm -hmm. After a certain point, it started to be more about the anime babes than the ships themselves. Which, I mean, I guess they didn't have a reason not to do that because it wouldn't. You'd still have your core audience of shoot 'em up fans, many of whom happen to be perverts, so mm -hmm. gives them extra incentive to play. Plus, you get that pervert audience who wouldn't otherwise uh, give your game a second glance. I may be simplifying it, but maybe you get what I get, what I'm uh, what I'm trying to say. 
They, okay, good point. The anime babes don't look very confident. They all look like frightened children. They do look, yeah. Yeah, a that's, a, that's a part I don't like either. Yeah, they. you could at least make them all like, just say they're in college or some shit. Come on. That's all part of the moe aesthetic, which is beyond the scope of the show. Yeah, we're not getting into that. We're not having this course about that. We look up, are... look up moe, moe at your local library if you mm -hmm. want more information. I got this on discount. I think I paid 15 bucks for it. And I didn't feel ripped off. I got a good couple hours out of it. A shorter road to 1cc than I was expecting, but not a horrible game by any measure. Alright, you clip this because it's going to be something controversial probably that I say, so Danny, you can get prepared for this. But I don't mind that the concept of the Proteus, of, of the, sorry, the Gradius uh, ships as sexy women, but these women seem frightened. They don't want to be here. <laughs> yeah, they, they should seem... be more excited. It should be a beach party. They, they're not having any fun. Say what you will about a lot of other boo-tastic games, but this <laughs> one is... They don't... No one's having a good time. I've seen the characters at least smile in Senran Kagura or whatever. I think they've smiled. You play a lot of Senran Kagura? I've seen it being played. And I've seen the characters smile. They seem like they're having more fun than in here where these, these women just seem... These girls, women just seem very depressed. Yeah. They don't want to be here. Oh, shit. I don't want to be here. <laughs> Depending on what you're in for with these games, you can take that as a positive or a negative, but uh, it's right there in your face the whole time. It's a little hard to ignore. Wait, there is a genre of dares where it's just depressed anime women? That's fascinating. I believe that was a thing. And as I mentioned before, if you want this game with a pillowcase, they released that over here. The special edition with pillowcase, Otomedius Excellent. You can track that down if you like. See, because in the cuts, well, in the cut scenes, they, they seem like, you know, they're smiling. They're like, hey, we're going to have a good time. But this doesn't seem like a good time. Who's having fun? Are they having fun? Are you having fun? I'm having a little bit of fun. Okay. <laughs> I mean, they're out here in space with no protective equipment. It's rough out here, just letting it all hang out. Like the asteroid slamming up against your naked body. God! <laughs> that has to be, get old after a little bit. Space rocks. Like, I don't mind one or two depressed anime women, but it's like... Like, someone's gotta have some fun, right? <laughs> like... It's like... Have more fun, damn it. I, I'm sorry, maybe it's, I'm being negative, but I don't like sexy things where it seems like no one is having a good time. And not even like, they're just having a bad, they're not even having a bad time, they're just like, I'm here, I, <laughs> I wanna exist. I want to say games have gotten a little bit better about that since then, but for this no. time, for this time that was especially prevalent. And if that's a thing you don't like, then you're probably not going to like this game. You're getting banned forever, and oh my lord, yeah, ban, I'm banning you personally. How many bannings did I get? One, two, three, four, five. I could be banned more. Let's go back to that menu and start uh, using the touchscreen feature. I think Alex would kill me if I did that. No, it's like even... <laughs> yes, I... Exactly, Smevel. Hot anime babes or anime babes in general need to organize for better working environments so they can have some fun and seem like they're having a decent time because this seems like it should be really... Okay, you've been banned, uh... One, I can't count these all. There so. we go. Now the bannings are coming in. Also, look at this slowdown. I want to say this game runs consistently, but I'd be a liar. So what I've hopefully gotten across is there's positives and negatives to be had here. The negatives can be amplified depending on how you feel about the presentation and the characters. But the game itself, while competent, is not a great Gradius game. It all comes down to that. This is a very mediocre way to end the Gradius series as a whole. Because after this, there was no more Gradius, no more Parodius, at least on consoles. And it just kind of ended with this wet fart of a game. Okay, I have a, I have a very hot take here. So, the problem with this game is it seems like it just wants to... Oh... Uh, ride the coattails of having anime babes without any effort being put into, like, fun. Plenty of people would love to ride the coattails of anime babes. <laughs> you say that like it's a bad thing. 
Give me a second. <laughs> Anyways, no, no, and but I've seen other like you know games that are that that, that you know count on their value of being of having sexy animators or being like a sexy game, but they usually have something else to them. There's something, you know... Yeah, there's like very the little depth here, unfortunately. The mechanics are there, or the art is interesting. 19 times been banned, by the way. Thank you for keeping count, Big Brain. Cool. Uh, 20. I think cool. it's a new record. 21. Oh, no, that was just God's Rage. 20. But that's the thing. It's like... Like, I'm thinking of, like, you know, like, you know. You know is a very adult game. Very ah, the, sexy babes. The girl who chants love at the bounds of this world. Yeah, but there's interesting gameplay mechanics. I'm thinking of, like, you know... I haven't played Center on Kagura, but I hear that the mechanics are actually pretty fun. You know, it can be a deep... They're generic, Serpent but... Core. And even even uh, Onichibara, the, the sexy bikini <laughs> Onichanbara. Babe. Onichanbara. Sorry, I probably said something horrible. Onichanbara. That is at least... It's boring and it's dull, but there's something to it. There's a core there that I find at least somewhat interesting and this i'm just so i think you should shoot that core you're right i should thank you for listening to my rant i get it there's a lot to discuss here i feel like we've had uh, a nuanced discussion <laughs> of, of otomedius but basically i want to like this game more than i do and depending on the kind of things you like in your anime and in your games you may like or dislike this game more than i do was that helpful? It didn't sound helpful. That's Otomedius excellent. Is that backward compatible with the new Xbox, I wonder? Anyone happen to know? Could you play this on the Xbox Series S or X? Would that solve the frame rate issues? Oh, I just saw a burn. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm turning into Ernest over here. Anyway, that's Otomedius excellent. If you bought it for cheap, you won't have a terrible time with it, but you'll also have that nagging feeling that it could have been so much more. And for that to be the end of the Gradius series as a whole is kind of depressing. I think it's almost somewhat... I think that I find this game creepier by how generic it is. Yeah. If it had more... Like they laser focused on the one part they wanted to focus on, but maybe should have paid more attention to the gameplay. It's like they added that poking thing and they're like, all right, that's enough, we're yep. done. We got the perverts. <laughs> Call it quits. We're heading off to the, the pachinko parlor. My treat. Is that something anyone says about pachinko? Oh, good. Iga worked on this. Sweet. Good work, Iga. I don't know. Only that. the best games. <sighs> well, we made it all the way through the stream and we haven't been banned yet. Uh, well... I'm, prepa I'm prepared to hear from Twitch any minute now, if not for DMCAs, then for uh, playing the Gradius games, where the, the ships have boobs. They're, they're, listen, Jeff Bezos is agreeing with me up in his fucking mansion. He's like, yes, those, those hot anime babes are far too generic to be interesting, and that is the main <laughs> problem with the game. Mm, Could have done yeah. way more with the formula. He says as he rapidly presses on the character's boobs. <laughs> he, rapidly, he rapidly presses on the new Retro Pals button. <laughs> that too. Well, this is the end of Retro Pals, probably, mm -hmm. but hopefully it was worth it. We showed off what two generations ago was like on the Xbox 360, so maybe that'll give you a little bit of perspective as you enjoy your new Xbox Series S or X, or maybe your PS5. Uh, consider what the games used to be like. There's no equivalent to Bomberman Act Zero on the new consoles, for better or for worse. Are we better off? Are we worse off? Who can say? I I think we're better off. I'm, I'm glad to know that... I actually wanted to give Otomedius a chance, and I'm glad to see it being played, so I got really bored. <laughs> I thought it was okay. Yeah. Do you feel differently? Feel free to discuss it in the Retro Pals Discord. Have fun moderating that, Alex. No! No! Don't you! Don't you dare! <laughs> I already, I know. <laughs> and on that note, we're done here. Thanks everyone for watching. Thanks to Konami for making all sorts of weird games. Thanks to me and the girls seen here <laughs> plucking up all the mushrooms out of the backyard and taking them all at once. That's what it looks like. I like the one in the middle who looks like Bratz Fran Drescher. <laughs> she does. Oh, it's horrible. Now I can't unsee it. Beat and Groovy, featuring Fran Drescher, now available on the new Xbox, the old Xbox, and the even older Xbox. Buy it today! Special thanks to all our patrons yes, for, thank you. first of all, being who you are, 
Mm -hmm. Second of all, for giving us money. And third of all, for voting in this week's poll. It's because of you we played Bomberman Axe Zero, and things rapidly went downhill from there, but hopefully you'll forgive me. I don't know, I, I had fun exploring those old-ass games. It's been fun firing them up after so many years. Uh, it wasn't so much fun scrolling through the download list trying to get to Turtles in Time reshelled. Yeah. Here's a hint, don't buy games that get delisted. Gotcha. That's, that's my tip from me to you. Uh, chat loves you. <clears throat> oh, thank you. I love you, too. Yeah, we're done here. Uh, if you want to vote for what we play during our Wednesday streams, just like this one, head to patreon.com slash retropals. If you're at the $5 tier, you get access to our weekly polls. I don't have a single clue about what this Friday's poll is going to be, but whatever it is, it's going up at noon on Friday, come hell or high water. Here's hoping it doesn't come to that. No hell, no high water. Yeah, neither of those. Uh, Alex, wrap us up. I'm going to look for a host. Okay, we're also on YouTube, youtube.com slash RetroPalsHQ. We po Not RetroPalsHQ, youtube.com slash RetroPals. My brain is broken. Apologies. Um, I blame Otomedius. I do too. I was just... The, I just got too bored. Um, we post full-length highlights of our streams there, including our latest one, which is our look at Titus that finally went up. So if you want to see us play through a shit ton of Titus games, like a lot... Oh, if you want to see so much Blues Brothers, you shit. More Blues then... Brothers games than you ever thought possible. Mm hmm Then check that out. Uh, we already posted the Discord and stuff. We're also on Twitter. Twitter.com slash RetroPals. Twitter.com slash RetroPalsHQ. Sorry, I'm still... my I'm still... I still have bleach brain. Um, <laughs> I'm cleaning the broken fridge all day. And uh, we post when we go live there. And we also retweet your memes and all that good stuff. Post clips. So do check that out if you want to see that. And Danny, who are we gonna host? Oh, we got a lot of options. Mm -hmm. It's showing me an ad for Chick Fil A. Hey, that's the day. I'm I'm calling. That's the most offended I've been all night, and I've been touching anime boobs for the last five minutes. <laughs> Jeez. Ah. Oh. Unfreaking believable. You do this to me on just, the day of my stream. Show me, show me a Chick Fil A ad with a fake streamer cow. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get Oh, so I have to compete with the homophobic cow now? <laughs> this is bullshit. I'm quitting Twitch. That's what Twitch is now. It's all mm -hmm. DMCAs and homophobic cows. <laughs> They're banning the retro pals just for the homophobic cows. All right, y'all. I'm going to leave you with Video Chess, who recently got partnered here on Twitch. <gasps> Hooray! Congrats to her. She is playing a game called Teardown, which is a game that gives you a hammer, and you just manually tear down all these buildings with it. It looks incredible. Holy I've shit. seen people have a lot of fun with it. So enjoy that. Have a good rest of your evening. We'll see you later. Thanks for watching. See ya, folks.